Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Craig Thomas Moose Morgan was booked into Hopkins County Jail Monday afternoon following two weeks of investigation that will continue, according to local law enforcement. Morgan, president and lead talent for the Way Radio Group and chief of the North Hopkins Fire Department, has been removed from management of the group by his partners and as chief of the Volunteer Fire Department. Morgan has been charged with a felony three theft and giving false statements to obtain property or credit, a state jail felony. According to Dr. Daryl Pierce, now president of the Way Radio Group, the current changes stem from Morgan's mismanagement at the radio station. Dr. Pierce stated that much of the theft was found in the operation's day-to-day -day financial discrepancies. Although he limited his comments due to ongoing investigation, Dr. Pierce said the group is currently unsure of the exact amount taken from the radio station that makes up the Way Group. Dr. Pierce said the radio group is forming a new LLC partnership that will remove both Morgan and his wife from the group and will be reworking the radio license with the Federal Communications Commission. Monday afternoon, the Way Bible Church posted to social media a letter to members of the congregation that meets at the Martin Springs community on Farm to Market Road 2560. The letter defined the relationship between the church and the Way Radio Group that owns two local radio stations. One of those stations, the Way, is a Christian station that airs worship services for the Way Church for a fee. Although the church and radio group share a name, the letter confirms to members that the church has no financial interest in the radio station or any ownership in the radio group. The letter can be found on kssdradio.com. A Hopkins County Sheriff's deputy watched as Gregory Alvarez Duran, age 44, of Silver Springs offloaded construction materials into a waterway near Highway 11. Duran had been dumping in excess of 1,000 pounds of rubble, debris, and construction materials into the waterway for the past two days without permission of the owner. Duran is in Hopkins County Jail charged with illegal dumping more than 1,000 pounds. He's being held on a $5,000 bond. A controlled burn at Cooper Lake State Park will keep underbrush in check on the 200-acre set of blaze Tuesday, according to Hopkins County Fire Chief Andy Inslee. Inslee wants residents in the northern part of Hopkins County who see the smoke to be aware that the burn is being controlled by the Texas State Parks and Wildlife Commission workers. This year, the work is being carried out later in the year due to weather and fire hazard conditions that have denied or delayed the timing. County firemen were busy earlier this week. Grass fire in the air, in a large area off County Road 3520 in the Dyke community. That was followed by an outside storage shed fire that spread into a grass fire in the Como Picton in the Como Pine Forest area. The storage shed was filled with wood tightly stacked, making it difficult for firemen to put out the fire, according to Inslee. Atmos Energy will be Again, flaring at the substation near County Road 2319 and Farm to Market Road 1870 by Reed Scrap Metal and the former AP Green Brick Plant. That flaring began today and will continue for 10 business days, according to County Fire Chief Inslee. Flames will shoot into the air approximately 50 feet. Inslee said residents do not need to call the fire department regarding the flaring. Atmos will have staff on hand should the flaring create a dangerous situation or cause an unplanned fire. Here's Don Julian with sports. Legendary Sulphur Springs football coach James Cameron has been named to the Texas High School Coaches Association Hall of Honor. The late Cameron also coached at Kilgore, Rockwall, and McKinney. Wildcats offensive coordinator Matt Young grew up around Cameron and the Wildcats since his father Tom was a Cameron football assistant. Coach Cameron had a lasting effect on a bunch of us as a coach and, and known throughout uh, Texas, not just East Texas. Now you played for him and uh, your father was assistant uh, under James Cameron. Yeah, I was really blessed. He's a big part of my life. Uh, grew up uh, in Rockwall when he was coaching there. He left Rockwall and went to Kilgore. We, we almost went with him. Um, and then when he came to Sulphur Springs in 1989, my dad called and asked if he had a job, and uh, that's how the Young family ended up in Sulphur Springs. So he I, he was my head coach the four years I played in high school, and uh, uh, just an awesome man. 
Now you you kind of grew up around the team, I guess, and uh, he knew you from uh, when you were a little. little yeah, kid. I've been fortunate. I mean, there's a when I got stitches on my forehead, bust my head in the field house. He carried me out uh, to when I got in high school and was playing for him, and saw him snapping footballs into the trash cans and um, you know eating M and M's and watching film and falling asleep. Uh, and then just hearing stories from the, the great coaches that come through here with him, you know, Coach King and, and my dad and Coach Evans, Coach Armstrong, all those guys, uh, you know, everybody's got a, a story about Coach Cameron. Uh, he was the kind of coach, I guess, playing for him. You just wanted to run through a wall or something for him, right? Yeah, he was definitely one of those motivational guys. He, uh, you know, he wore a suit a lot of times on game night, or at least that's how he started. <laughs> and uh, quickly the tie would be loosened, the shirt would be, you know, untucked. And uh, he did a lot of coaching from outside the numbers. Uh, out on the field, and uh, but he got you to play. Uh, I mean, I'll never forget for us, there was a night we played Athens. Uh, we were a pretty good football team that year. I think we ended up the year we went 10-0, and 0, and uh, we were down at half, and he came in one of those slobbering talks, and he's spitting all over the place. And, and uh, as a part of the team, we went out and played great and won the second half, and the story goes on from the coaching side. You hear later on that after he got done, and, you know, we all go storming out, and he'd gotten after us, and he turned to one of the other coaches and said, well, how'd I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, you think they'll play or that kind of deal. So uh, he was a joy to play for. He really did things his own way and uh, really made you love him and, and want to do your best for him. You, you always hear stories about him. Everybody just seemed to love him in this town. He was a beloved coach. Yeah, I mean, it, that he was so passionate. Uh, and he had a great knack for – for really not giving up on kids, uh, a lot of there's a lot of guys that coach right now uh, that played for him here, played for him in Kilgore, played for him in Rockwall, uh, that have been a part of my life, and it's a reason we a lot of us probably coach is because the impact Coach Cameron had and the way he did things, uh, the way he made every kid feel like they were the superstar, uh, and and loved on you, and uh, just really taught you how to be a young man. He had some great years here, uh, some great football teams. Oh yeah, I mean the year we went ten and zero and got a number one ranking to having a couple of runs deep in the playoffs. Uh, he had success wherever he went. Uh, he did a great job of really uh, just putting his stamp on a team and getting them to play and, and, and getting everybody to play. Yeah, it's a great award uh, uh, for him and uh, also Eddie Peach. I don't know if you know him. Uh, but uh, Yeah, just I mean, when you're inducted into the Texas High School Coach Association Hall of Honor, it, it says a lot. Uh, Coach Cameron, there's a lot for him either way without that honor, but it, he's definitely deserving of and, and really just excited for him and his family for that recognition. The Wildcats golf team won the last tournament they played before spring break. And I talked with Wildcats golf coach Chris Owens. Yes, sir. We went to Indian Creek Golf Course over in Carrollton. Newman Smith hosted an invitation over there. Uh, the kids played well. Uh, our second best score of the year. Uh, really proud of that. It was on a better, it was a you know, more difficult golf course than what we played when we shot 298 over in Wood Hollow. Uh, kids shot 302. Uh, which was a good mark for us. Uh, you know, I had four out of the five in the 70s, which which I mm. think is what we're going to need to really compete in district. Uh, yeah. Alex Moats played well, shot a 71 and won first place. All the kids medaled, uh, mm. too, which was really good. Caleb Lewis, 75, he was second place. Andrew Escobar, 77, and was third place. Carter Lewis shot 79, was fourth place. And Matt Calhoun was shot an 82, was fifth place. So uh, very pleased with that. Um, Excited about that, you know, and if we can pull that off and do that two days in a row, I think we've got a really good chance to, at, at the district championship. So uh, just striving for that and still working towards that. Uh, next week we're going to go over and play at Rockwall where the district course will be, uh, where the district uh, tournament is. So there's a tournament held over there and uh, at Rockwall Golf and Athletic Club. So mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to that and letting the kids see the course again. Most of these kids have seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, a few times, the older kids especially have played it. That's where district was last year. That's where they host regionals. So that's a good thing for us. If we can make it to regionals, we will have seen the course a few times before we get there. It kind of gives you an advantage. Uh, did they uh, break out the golf clubs uh, any uh, during spring break? Or Oh, yes. Uh, they stayed busy. Then. Kids stayed busy playing. Several of them played uh, multiple tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on their own. But uh, – but, uh, you know, with the weather like it is right now, I hope it stays the way it, you know, it continues to be good. Uh, you know, it's been phenomenal right now. You know, we've had a great spring with not, you know, the last few years we've been fighting rain and cancellations and, and cold weather and that stuff. But this spring's been awesome. The grass is really growing, so the golf courses are, are you know, the grass is filling in and, and everything's looking good. So looking forward to that and hope that continues. 
Two Saltillo Lady Lions and two Saltillo Lions were selected to all region teams selected by the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. Making the all region three Class A team were Lady Lions senior Anna Gallegos and senior Melissa Gronwold and Lions junior Trevor Moore and junior Lyle Bench. The Saltillo Lady Lions finished as a regional quarter finalist. The Saltillo Lions finished as a regional semifinalist. Saltillo coach Bill Giles said when the team plays well and goes deep into the playoffs, then individual awards get chosen. He added all four student athletes had an outstanding year, leading their team through the season and the playoff run. Saltillo Lions student-athlete Dakota Patridge signed a letter of intent Tuesday to attend school and run cross-country for Hardin-Simmons University in Abilene. The signing took place in the superintendent's office at Saltillo High School Tuesday morning. Patridge was a member of the Lions state champion Class 1A cross-country team. Patridge finished 18th at the state meet on November 12th, running a time of 17 minutes, 41 seconds. All the members of the cross-country team were honored with the reading of a proclamation by County Judge Robert Newsom on the steps of the Hopkins County Courthouse in Sulphur Springs on December 13th. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.